I've been asked quite often about this AEIOU concept, acronym for acquiring, enlivening, intensifying, being one with and being united with the spiritual conditions. People ask, how did you come to that? It is not my invention, it is here in our book, Towards Infinity. If you read the first description of the first knot, you will come to know it. My great puzzle is this, that this book is by the Master. So, you, when we read this book, we should read in the spirit with which a great Master has written this book. When he says, when you acquire a condition, he gives the onus of acquiring the condition unto us. When you acquire, when your devotion takes you further, when you enliven this, when you intensify this. <laughs> but from a devotee's perspective, from our perspective, our attitude, it is the master who does it for us. And that should be our attitude, see. When he says, oh, you got this condition because of yourself, if she start owning up to that state, then this whole book will be a failure, see. There's, it's a very subtle difference, you see. Master will give credits to us. Nevertheless, we should never forget our position and say without their help, nothing is possible. This is the attitude of lowliness, attitude of a vacuum, vacuum that is created in the heart of an abhyasi. This vacuum is created only through this intense love and longing Longing is the key. Right? So I would <clears throat> read that particular aspect to you all. Babuji Maharaj talks about the first knot and he says, the real state of enlightenment comes when we get into full consciousness of the condition of enlightenment and after imbibing its effect, secure our merging in it. He has described all AEIOU in one sentence. He says the real state of enlightenment comes only when we get into a full consciousness, when we become fully aware of the condition of enlightenment, that it is really living and thriving in my body, in my entire system where I'm pulsating with those feelings. And then when those feelings are really, really pulsating in your whole system, every cell of your body is dancing with those vibrations, we imbibe that. It, this imbibing happens automatically. And this securing up merging also happens as a natural course. Of course, there are things that can accelerate all these things, like when we write diaries, for example, when we interact with people who are of similar mind. You know, when two lunatics meet, as Babuji says, they have nothing else to talk about what made them so lunatic. When two bhaktas meet, when two devotees meet, what else they have except tears of joy to share with each other? There is no politics there. The moment you bring in politics, Kaya, your spiritual condition will take a toss. And there are abhyasis, I have noticed. And there are abhyasis. There are abhyasis are full of, full of sarcasm and complaints and what not. There are other abhyasis who shy away from such discussions. And they choose to remain in their own beautiful states. They don't like to corrupt it with these gossips. Furthermore, when Babuji Maharaj says, when we develop this state and merge into its consciousness, means awareness, 
we come to know all about it, not just little bit. We come to know all about it and thus become jnani, that is enlightened up to that extent. So if you are on the first knot and you become absolutely merged in the first knot with this awareness of the environment, then you have become jnani or you have seen everything unto that extent. The blissful state brought about by it tempts our heart to go ahead. You see, this is a Guru's wish that the blissful state that is given to them will at least tempt the Abhyasi to proceed further. You see, it's like, you know, carrot putting in front of us. So they want us to be tempted by these conditions. And our touch with it offers inducement to enter into the next stage. Now, <clears throat> this is again when you see it is from Babuji's perspective. He says, and our touch with it, with this uh, new inkling that they are enticing you with, offers the inducement to enter the next stage. But a real seeker to me, when I read this, should I be tempted by it? Does that mean that I should start craving for the next stage? It's a catch-22 situation, you see, where you are always looking forward to a new state. This can also be misunderstood as that you are a greedy person as far as spirituality is concerned. Aren't you happy with what has been given to you? At least simmer yourself, savor your conditions. Automatically, when we are in that state, we have much to do with what has been given. Digest that and automatically whatever has to happen will happen in its, in its course. So the idea of even indulging with the new conditions is also blasphemous to a true devotee. So this AEIOU, when we, when, we, when we talk about, it is to understand the whole entire mechanism of it, but nothing is in our hands, nothing whatsoever except our practice and a little bit of alertness and carefulness from our side so as not to distort what has been given to us as prasad. Spiritual conditions are prasads. We have to appreciate it in a different way, you see. It is not like an ordinary gift. When we carefully put away so nicely a love letter that you have received in your teenage times, what do you do with those love letters? Whether you happen to be lucky to marry the same person or not, but the imprints of those love letters will always be there. If not physically, at least they will remain hidden in the hearts. You carefully keep them protected. What about this gift coming from beloved? Beloved Babuji, do we care enough to retain them? We should ask this fundamental question. Are we able to appreciate those conditions as if given by the Beloved and stock it up nicely, hide it somewhere in the deeper recesses of our heart? Can we do that? If we can, then you would have crossed the entire journey with one step.